they steal money meant for drugs in hospital. And thanks to that shortage, patients die and they come to bury us. Mr. Speaker, they steal money meant to fix our roads. Mr. Speaker, they go ahead and buy four-wheel drives that can avoid potholes and buy choppers and courtesy of those bad roads. When we die, they come to show us. We don't want that money. Mr. Speaker, in Tana River, I have had the choice and pleasure for six years to practice medicine in the coast province. And I know what poverty has done, not just in Western, but in coast. So, Mr. Speaker, there is still money meant to improve the productivity of the lands in coast so that they allow the people of Tana River to come to them through Harambe's begging for food. Mr. Speaker, through this law, we don't want that kind of money. And Mr. Speaker, this law has been very well thought, thought through. When you read through, Mr. Speaker, it is not casual. Let me respond, for example, to the concerns in this bill of the Senator of Tana River. We have part Roman three, which speaks to fundraising appeals. And they say, Mr. Speaker, in clause eight, that the provision of this part shall not apply to a private fundraising appeal where the solicitation is made from members of the, for beneficiaries of the nuclear family or relatives and does not extend to members of the public. Clearly, this bill is going to allow us to sit as a family in Marinya, a family in Idaho, and do our fundraising. What they are against is public fundraising. And the law has gone further, Mr. Speaker, in Clause 9, has created distinction between public and private fundraising. It is the public fundraising that we want to control. I therefore, Mr. Speaker, wish to appeal to colleagues, let's go through this proposal with a tooth comb so that we can refine it for it to be better. Are you saying this thing is a joke? When you saw a few days ago, none other than the Catholic bishops of Kenya speak to this issue. And in fact, Mr. Speaker, in unprecedented action, Archbishop Agnolo, who for the information of this house, is a man born from Shinyalu, and he's the Archbishop here in Nairobi. Philip Agnolo has done the unthinkable. He has returned money to politicians. So when you say we are doing something that does not appeal to the public, knowing that Catholics control over 50% of the Christians in this country. Knowing that the Catholics have permeated all our villages and they could possibly be the voice of the poor who we pretend to be assisting when actually thieves are using that opportunity to sanitize money that they have stolen from our coffers. We must address it so that on Sunday, when I go to church, when you go to church, when all our other politicians go, including the head of state, he can comfortably make his contribution without any worries as to the interpretation. And this law has gone further, Mr. Speaker. They have said in this law, in clause 11, they have put exemptions. Exemptions are here. Senator for Narok, if you go to clause 11, they tell you money or property 
collected by or under the authority of a recognized representative of a religious association is accepted. It means when the law is true, we can then go to Archbishop Agnolo and give him our contribution to help the church to be constructed. I would be the last, the last person, Mr. Speaker, to fight the Harambe spirit. Because if it had not been for the 100 shillings in 1976, which Muirizali Halanganga gave me 